Welcome to Pentagram Prime. Today's lesson will focus on evaluation of the integral of the error function from zero to infinity. There is, of course, no antiderivative for e to the negative x squared, but it is possible to evaluate the integral using a few tricks, including a change in coordinates. The first thing we're going to do is square the integral in question referred to here as the quantity i. In doing this, we now have two independent definite integrals that are being multiplied times one another. What is important to keep in mind is that the variable x in each integral needs only to be consistent for the definite integral in question. The integral on the right could have x replaced with s, um, and the one on the left could have its own x replaced with m. So let's change one of the x's to a y. So this is interesting and all, but there's still no way that you're going to evaluate uh, either of these two integrals individually. Fortunately, the nature of multivariable calculus allows us to treat i squared as a two-dimensional problem. Combining the terms, we get the following. Employing a little bit of algebra, we arrive at an expression that integrates across the entire first quadrant of a 2D Cartesian coordinate system. So let's pause here to get a sense of what this thing is that we just created. The integral i is essentially the area underneath the right-hand side of the bell-shaped curve. i squared, however, is more like the volume of dirt underneath, say, the northeast corner of a perfectly shaped hill. <clears throat> I do hope that you're enjoying my Between Two Ferns inspired animation. Um, <clears throat> for those of you trolls out there, I've watched way too many 80s horror movies. And, well, I'm not against sending a member of my staff over to your house, you know, if you fail to be respectful. There we are. Now, part of the reason I went to the trouble of pointing out the shape of this integral is because when I first uh, learned this, I was still drinking. I didn't have the time or the discipline to review basic multivariable calc, not with staying up late listening to depressing rock ballads as I wondered why the young lady in my German class, for example, that I would later fail, did not appreciate me showing up unannounced as she was walking to class. I was in a bad place. The point is, I somehow stumbled through this problem without taking even 30 seconds to notice the geometry of that which I chose to integrate. There are already a painful number of mathematical problems where your instructor might answer a request for illustrations with, that would be great except they are six dimensional. So I will strive to provide visual aids wherever possible. The mountaineering enthusiast in me, by the way, prefers a topo. Now, in order to evaluate i squared over the entire first quadrant, we will need to switch from Cartesian to polar coordinates. The first quadrant, of course, is bounded by theta values from 0 to pi over 2, with r extending from 0 to infinity. Conversion from Cartesian to polar coordinates is, on the surface, pretty straightforward, but the process of employing that conversion while integrating over two variables is a little more nuanced and represents something else that I should have been paying more attention to while I was pounding at a bulls at off-campus parties in the late 90s. This requires something called the Jacobian. A 
precise definition of the Jacobian and its implications for multivariable integration is a topic that I would prefer to cover in a separate episode. For now, it's enough to say that you need it in order to properly convert a Cartesian area element, in this case dx dy, to, a, <clears throat> to its equivalent in polar coordinates. I will, however, demonstrate how it is derived for this specific example. Here, the Jacobian is the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix containing four permutations of partial derivatives of Cartesian coordinates with respect to polar coordinates. Employing some algebra and a Pythagorean identity gives us the value of R for the Jacobian. Therefore, when we substitute the Jacobian back into our previous expression for i squared, we finally have an integral in terms of r and theta. Our first step in attacking this thing is to separate the theta and the r components. d theta is a straightforward evaluation over a singular integrand giving us a value of pi over 2. We can now focus solely on the remaining r component. I'd like to pause here to stress the utility of employing some memorization in mathematics. Exactly how much is extremely subjective, so I won't bother specifying what is or is not important in your specific area of study. But I know that when I was in this, uh, <clears throat> when this integral came up the first time, uh, my reaction was to dig up an integral table. Now, for all of his contributions to both science and pop culture, unverified stories about Albert Einstein using a dictionary instead of simply learning to spell, did people like me a disservice in my earlier years. This approach to problem solving can frequently waste a lot of time. For my part, I found over the years that simply knowing problems cold allowed me to make a pretty good guess as to the appropriate substitution that I will now describe. We will let u uh, <clears throat> equal negative r squared so that we get negative 2r for du dr and a value of du divided by negative 2r for dr. I suppose that you can take the time to work out the value of r in terms of u, but as you'll see in a moment, that's not really necessary here. As you can see, there is an r both in the numerator and the denominator. As long as r behaves and does not take on the value of 0 on the interval, then these two terms cancel out. And what we are left with is e to the u multiplied times uh, negative 1 half. So from here, we need only to evaluate the integral of e to the u, a little bit of common sense and arithmetic, and there we are. We have i squared equal to pi over 4. And since i is equal to the square root of i squared, 
we now have i equal to the square root of pi divided by 2. Of course, employing the positive results in for the uh, square root. And last but not least, make life easier on the graders and remember to always box your answer. Zai Jian.